Welcome to tutsowl.com in our first screencast about Node.js. In this episode, I would like to explain what Node.js is and what kind of applications we can use it for. I won't be explaining how to install Node.js yet, so if you don't have it on your machine, don't worry about it. I will explain it in the next episode. Node.js is a software platform built on Google's V8 JavaScript engine for easily building fast, scalable network applications. V8, as I said, is a JavaScript engine uh, for interpreting and executing JavaScript. It's written in C++ and it's blazingly fast, and so is Node.js. Node.js was introduced in 2009 by Ryan Dahl. So it's roughly five years old and it's being developed really, really fast. It's also getting lots of popularity. In fact, it's one of top three most popular projects on GitHub. It's also used widely by many enterprises, such as Yahoo, LinkedIn, uh, eBay, Walmart, PayPal, Uber, and many, many others. For a more complete list, you can go to the official Node.js website, uh, nodejs.org slash industry. And here you will find a list of uh, many companies which are using Node.js together with quotes from their CEOs and CDOs saying how they use Node.js and why they love it. Node.js uses event-driven and non-blocking I.O. model. To explain that, I will first explain what a blocking model is. And for that, let me use a metaphor. Let's say you are doing a grocery shopping and you already picked up all the products you want to buy and you are heading to the cashier, to the checkout line, but the cashier is actually handling another customer. So basically you have to wait until the first customer is finished. The cashier can handle clients only one by one and has to first finish processing first one and then they, uh, she or he can start with another customer. So this kind of model is fairly popular in programming languages. One of the examples is Ruby. Let's uh, demonstrate it by writing a simple script which will read uh, contents of a file. So here I prepared contents.txt file with some sample content and uh, let's create Ruby script. Uh, let's call it blocking read dot rb. What we do here, in the first line we will read consent of the file. And then let's output it to the screen. And let's also output text saying that we are done with it. If we save the script and run it, we can see uh, probably what we expected. So first we see content of the file and then we see end of contents. So as we see Ruby is executing lines one by one. However, it's not always like this. And uh, in Node.js, as I mentioned, we see something what's called non-blocking I.O. model. A good metaphor for that would be restaurant. Let's say we go to the restaurant and uh, sit next to the table and order salmon. The waiter takes our order, goes back to the cook, uh, tells him that he should prepare salmon, and uh, cook starts preparing it. But the waiter, in the meantime, uh, goes back to the main room, uh, takes another order, um, brings cocktails to other customers. He doesn't wait for uh, cook to finish preparing the dish. Uh, he handles other tasks in the meantime. And this is exactly how Node.js works. I will create another script, uh, this time using Node.js, which will also read content of the file, but as you see, the results of it will be a little bit different. Let's call it non-blocking read. In the first line, we need to load a module, uh, which will allow us to read content of the file. In 
Now we can uh, read the file using read file function. That's quite logical. And as first parameter, it accepts a uh, name of the file, which in our case is contents.txt. In a second parameter, we have to specify an encoding which we want to use. And the first third parameter is quite interesting because this will be actually a function. It will accept two parameters, error and data. And uh, this function is called callback function. It will be called when read file finishes processing and has data ready uh, for us. In the case of error though, uh, we'll get information about that error in our second, uh, or in this case, first parameter, which is error. Uh, so in the real world scenario, we should implement a proper error handling, uh, check whether error happened or not, and uh, then proceed appropriately. Uh, for this tutorial, to keep it short and simple, I will assume that everything went successfully and it will just display uh, information on the screen. Also, let's display um, end of content text, uh, similar as in Ruby example. Now let's save it and then run. And this result might be a little bit su surprising for some of you, uh, because in this case, first we display end of results text, and as the second we display the actual contents of the file. Why is that? Uh, as I said, Node.js uses the non-blocking model, which means that it tells the module to read contents of a file but it doesn't wait for it to finish. <clears throat> it immediately proceeds with uh, the application and it continues executing the next line. Uh, so in this case, it goes to console log end of contents. It displays that and then after some time, uh, when read file finishes processing and has uh, data for us, the callback function is called and our data is being displayed. That's why uh, we see uh, that the output is in different sequence. If we would like to fix it, it's fairly easy. We just copy this line and put it inside the callback function. Let's call it again. And now we see everything is as it's supposed to be. This is fairly common pattern in a Node.js. Uh, Almost all functions which are dealing with uh, files or sockets are asynchronous. And uh, as a last parameter, they will accept a callback function, uh, which will be called once the operation is complete. This non-blocking IO model is very useful when we are writing real-time applications where users communicate with each other. Uh, some examples of those would be social networking sites, collaboration tools, uh, chat rooms or different types of online games. Another advantage of uh, Node.js is that it uses JavaScript. What that means is that with Node, we can write both backend and front end, the front end of our application using exactly the same language and pretty much the same skill set. I hope now you have a good understanding of what Node.js is, uh, when we should use it, and how non-blocking IO model works. Uh, especially the last thing is very important. If you had background in uh, different programming languages, that might take some time to get used to. You will see it all over again in many different situations. And the whole asynchronous model is why the Node.js got actually so popular. So it's definitely worth looking into it and understanding it well. In the next episode, I would like to uh, show you how we'll uh, install Node.js and we'll also create our first application. Uh, make sure you don't miss the next episode, subscribe to the email newsletter, like us on Facebook, uh, follow on Twitter, and thank you for watching.